so lads, I thought I'd just uh, start with a little bit of an overview of what we're doing today. Um, obviously, so and some introductions. Um, I'm Andrew Turner, I'm Managing Director of Benthill Properties. I'm joined with Toby, our Rentals Director, and Tom, our Sales Director today. Hello. Uh, hello, lads. <laughs> uh, we're a little bit out of his comfort zone because it's the first time we've done anything like this from a podcast style of things. So um, just thought we'd get the overview and introductions started and then uh, we'll start to talk about the key part of today which is um, the renters rights bill and obviously just to get an understanding out there for people um, but Toby I think you're going to just give us a bit of an overview of what we're going to be talking about today within that yeah so, so the renters rights bill um, is delivered by the government's manifesto commitment to transform the experience of private renting including abolishing section 21 evictions and introducing a robust decent home standard in the sector for the very first time the objective of the bill is to ensure private renters not only have access to a secure and decent home, but that they can exercise their rights to challenge poor treatment and bad practice. Landlords should retain the confidence to repossess their properties where they have good reason, but with suitable safeguards for tenants who may be losing their home. Okay. So that's Sound, it. Sounds scary when you talk about it on the iPad like that, but it's <laughs> hopefully today for me and for everyone, you're going to clear a lot up, aren't we? And I think so. Get things sorted. Yeah, look, I mean, the key, the key part of what we're trying to set up here is obviously we've got 150 tenancies, you know, that we look after. Um, and we've got landlords that we've looked after for years and years. And we want to sort of get over the key parts to this. It's a big thing. No, let, let, let's be fair, it's not, <coughs> it's not a small thing and there's going to be a lot of press coverage about it going to get bigger and bigger and we'll talk about the dates and things as we go through the podcast but we wanted to get this out there quite early um, for a couple of reasons, one to just have something to send to our landlords to explain to them where we're up to with it and with lots of positivity which we'll talk about between us about we've actually been doing a lot of it already anyway yeah. um, but we'll cover some of that off in the the three key areas that we've picked out so myself and Toby have, have really spent the most time on it obviously it is very new it's changed a few times because the governments have changed um, but we have now got you know a very clear picture that it's definitely going to come in yes. You know, we we were sort of like last year told that you know you do your work on it, but it might not ever happen. Mm -hmm. Now we know it's definitely happening. You know, obviously with the change of government that's happened, so we've implemented a lot of the things naturally just because of the way that we run our lettings company, haven't we? Mm -hmm. But I think the key parts is we've sort of drilled into it and we've broken it down to to three different parts, which we're going to talk about today. And they're basically in, increasing tenant security. It's a massive part of why they're doing it. We're going to talk about um, improving the rental experience in general for landlords hopefully, as well as tenants. And we're also going to talk about the compliance and the legalities of it. Slight caveat in all that is, is that there are ongoing changes. It's not set in stone this. So we're just picking the bits out that we think are the most important parts. And then that will lead into to where, we're, where we're going to sort of like give hopefully people that have time to watch and listen an idea of, of where we're up to. Sounds that makes sense. Yeah, it sounds yeah. like it's not all doom and gloom as well, which was interesting. You said there's a lot of ways we can help tenants and help landlords and change and adapt the ways that we work. That's quite exciting. It, it, it is. I, I, I'm a massive believer that we, we're already in a brilliant position to, for our current landlords. Yeah. But also, like, well, let's be clear, we want to encourage landlords that are concerned about this and worried about it to pick the phone up and read. Yeah, yeah. Users. yeah, yeah. you know, and, and you know, there's, there's lots of people out there who talk about things like, I use the words accidental landlords and I use the words reluctant landlords. They're people that have ended up renting and majority of them are looking after the properties themselves, but they'll have no idea the fact that, you know, very shortly they're going to have to sign um, a legal registration to say that they are a landlord. <laughs> You know, yeah. um, little things like that where you've got that to, to add the concerns over. Um, and, you know, that's the key part is he's just getting out there. It's a chance to, you know, just pick the phone up, ring us and we'll, we'll talk you through what's actually happening and the positives of it, which mainly there, but there are some bits that are quite different. Yeah, there are uh, definitely there. differences, but I think the majority of it is just going to make the whole experience of renting a property out better for both landlords and tenants if yeah. done if done in the right way. Yeah. That's nice to hear. That's yeah. that probably gives people a lot of security hearing that from you, managing Definitely. the amount of properties that we do and working so well locally to come out and say it's gonna make it a better experience for everyone for involved everyone. is is a real positive. So that's nice Definitely. to hear. Yeah, it's there. I mean, so like, like I said, the, the three areas that we're going to focus in on are to start with is, is the security part of it. 
Um, and obviously within <coughs> the security, I've got four little sections that we've highlighted. Yeah. So I think probably if I, if I talk first and foremost about the, the big one that people are all very aware of is the abolishing of section 21. Mm -hmm. I think it's probably worthwhile pointing out here that Tom's got a couple of investment properties and Tom's more of a, sort of like we, we phrase it, don't we? Tom's more of an investor than a landlord because we manage mm -hmm. the properties for him and take all the stresses and the hassle away and the legalities. Yeah, you do everything uh, for him. <laughs> uh, so effectively, uh, when, when landlords uh, ring us up, yeah. compared to investors, it's slightly different. As an investor rings up, an investor might be absolutely panicking that, and abolishing the Section 21 notice, which is where you ask tenants to leave when you've done absolutely nothing wrong yeah yeah that's the wing and that's a massive thing isn't it so it's, it's a big thing but it's mm. then it's also something that doesn't necessarily happen as much as what people would think if you've got a tenant in that's looking after your property paying on time doing all the right things very rarely does a landlord then ask them to to and leave the vast majority of landlords the, you work with are looking long term exactly if yeah. you do want to if you need to sell obviously situations change and you need to sell the property or you might need the property back you're still going to be allowed to do that. So I think the, the no, no fault eviction thing looks quite scary. Again, we've already said, when you actually dig down into it, it's not necessarily... So is it, is it maybe more new investors that potentially it may be off-putting if they see that in the media in the coming months? Or? I think so, because that first headline makes it look like, well, yeah. once I rent it out, I'm never getting my house back. Yeah. It's, but if, it's not the case. It's not the case. No, if something yeah. changes and you need the property back because you've, I don't know, you've moved away for work and, and that's not worked out and you need your home back, you can get your home back. But that's one no, of the reasons We've had that example that exactly this morning we've we done were just talking morning. about. Yeah. You now we've got a current landlord that's moved away for work purposes yeah. and has decided to stay there. And they've contacted us today and said, look, we are unfortunately going to have to sell the house that we've rented out. Mm -hmm. um, that's going to be no problem, but this is where the key book comes. There's changes, you yeah. know, and so... Toby, you just talked us through a couple of the changes that means that, you know, in that scenario, if someone says, I want my house back because I'm going to sell it, yeah. what what are what are the main differences? Well, I think it's all to do with the, the notices and the, the yeah. time that you're going to have to have to give them. At the moment, it's two months' notice yeah. um, to, to get a tenant out and bring your property back. That's moving to four yeah. if, if at no fault. So, obviously, again, it brings it into the security. It's giving that tenant security that they've got that extended period to... Which is to, a positive, to find something, which, which, is, positive thing, which is a positive because yeah. you spin it the other way from a landlord's point of view. If they're getting four months, you're giving them more chance to find something else, yeah. less chance of them all extending the, the stay when they're not meant to be or yeah. refusing to move because you're giving them more if you think chance about, to find something. If you think something. about it right now, what are we on? 23rd of October. Yeah. It's eight weeks until Christmas Day anyway. Yeah. That particular tenant in that house if if we do it by the current rules and we're going to encourage this landlord to do it by the new rules they don't have to but i think we will do because we know them a little bit that would mean that we were giving a tenant today notice to move out three days before christmas yeah. and they've yeah. got three kids so yeah. for us that is you know just a very very important point that people can see that from a tenancy perspective is fine and it's not much change to the landlord. It's not much change. Yeah. Now, I think the key areas of the back of that is, is that unscrupulous landlords have used these before when they don't want to spend money on their houses and things like that. Yeah. So, you know, we don't have that type of clientele because we try to choose who we're going to work with. But the key part from this is, is that if they give notice and then don't sell it over, there's a big change there, isn't there? Yeah. So if you got rid of your tenant and then wanted to re-rent it you can't do for 12 months so you can't get rid of someone change your mind and then put it straight back out on the rental market yeah you've got to have a 12 month gap between that tenant leaving and it going back on the yeah. rental so market that's a, bit, so that's that's security that's a more security again, again for yeah. the tenant and and again landlords they can't just make sort of off the cuff decisions they've got to really think about what what they're doing making yeah. sure it's right and it's going to be a long term project for them that plays such a, a big part into your job doesn't it when you think about what we talk about daily about the quality of you know the people that we're meeting we want to make sure that they're genuinely wanting the property long term it's now so important that you know people are it's from our side we just want people to be transparent don't we that's it and open with us so that we can provide the best services and and, and be clear with people on the outline of what our landlords want as well we all yeah, talk about open, honest, and, and accurate, accurate what we yeah. do. I mean, but... the, the key part for us is, is you know, we are, look, not really today, but blowing out everything that we do, but, you know, there's 
Talk has got full control over the all the, the tenancies, and we've got clear communication between landlord and tenant going on all the time. Yeah. You know, in Toby's absence, I back up and support. So from our perspective, you know, our landlords are going to get the chance to watch this podcast to give them a reassurance. But from new landlords' perspective, it, it's having that personal interaction. And it, if you build strong, better relationships between agent, landlord, tenant, mm. the tenancies become better looked right, after, yeah. longer term. The rent increases, which we'll talk about in a minute, become easier when they actually ask for. Mm. Uh, and and yeah. it's all, like I say, talking about getting it better for, yeah. for, for tenants. <clears throat> it is better for tenants, but also the landlords will just end up with well, better longer term investments. Yeah, off, off the back you, of it you mentioned rent increases there, then, so I think so that's, that's next on the agenda, wasn't it? So tell, yeah, tell me more so about that. Rent increases, um, pretty much the way that we do it already. Um, so there's not a massive change for what we for what we do, but you're only going to be able to do one increase per year, which is right. the way we work it, um, and it's got to be at market value. So how they're going to work out market value again at the moment is is unknown. We already use RPI, so the Retail Price Index, which helps us keep it at mar <coughs> market value. They've probably used something similar, I would have thought. Um, notice of any rent increases moving from one month to two, Fine. Um, which again, is that security for the tenant that they're not just going to get dropped on with a big increase. Yeah. Um, and the one thing that tenants are going to have access to is um, an easy access tribunal service to appeal any any above market increases. So if your tenant feels like that's not the correct increase that it should be, or it's a little bit more than what it should be, they're going to have a really easy access tribunal mm -hmm. to go to, to, to try, and, try and counteract that increase. So I think it is going to be really, really important that we carry on doing what we are doing and the way we have worked to make sure that them increases are just steadily over the years, as opposed to not have somebody increase the room for five years and then ask for like a big 25, 30% chunk, which some yeah. landlords do ask for, don't yeah, they? Absolutely. As you can probably in the background, we are like doing this live, guys. It's not right. So I'm just gonna have to go and nip and just sort this customer out. I'm just gonna leave Toby and Tom just to just keep, carry on with this, this last bit. It's all in a minute, that's all right. So the, the last bit of the security before Andrew comes back and moves us on to the next section um, is to do with um, rental bidding. Yeah. So it's not something we do a lot of. It's interesting though, isn't it? Because the demand on all of our rental properties is so substantial yeah. when we list them live. So Yeah, it, it's probably something we could have done more, but it's not something that's ever sat right with us. But whatever a property goes on the market at now is the price that we're going to now have to rent the property out. Right, okay. So we're going to have to put a published rent on right move or mm. on the site or whatever site we advertise on and that is the rent that we have to so if we have like we do at the moment 30 40 people all come in for the same property you always get asked the question don't you can i pay 50 pounds no you can't is the simple answer um i think in probably the five and a bit years i've done this now we've only ever done it probably a handful of times anyway it's yeah. not something that happens on every property so it's, again it's not a big change i think it's always dependent on the, the landlord that we're working with yeah. as well what's most important what's most and, and that's the thing for us if you already if you start going to ask for more rent you're straight away yeah. putting the tenant on sort of a back foot that you you're trying to sort of maybe overwork them a little bit which we don't need to do so again it's not a massive change for us and, and something that we're going to carry on doing as normal and and I think, well, every company is going to have to do it, which, again, is more security for the tenant. Um, I think briefly, before we touched on the notices um, and the periods for that, and there was a few bits that we, we just missed on that. So I'm just going to run through a few yeah. little bullet points here of, of different bits that are changing with the notice. So it is the area at the moment where there's probably the most grey gray areas of, of definite date. So that will come in over the next few readings and as they make changes. But that's what most people are going to want to know is these key dates, these key when dates. they arise, yeah. when things are going to have to be in place. Because it this podcast, as much as it's for, our existing landlords that work alongside us on on the management side of things we're trying to provide the information yeah. for everybody out there and it's, tenants it's got to be we just want people to be compliant and safe yeah. so, so yeah four months notice for landlords if it's an no-fault eviction so if yeah. you want to sell it family member moving back in whatever those kind of no-fault evictions four months all tenants are going to have to give two months notice when they're moving out yeah. um, as opposed to one so again a bit more security that this time for the landlord um we you can't give notice in the first 12 months of a tenancy right so if, if you want the property back if you want to sell it that cannot be done now 
in the first 12 first months. months. So that's completely... That's brand new. That's that, brand it? new. So yeah. that's something that just can't happen. So yeah. in your first 12 months, the tenant knows that they're not going to be asked to leave unless there's rent arrears, um, which we'll touch on in a minute, or and any antisocial behaviour. They're only grounds that you're going to be able so to be asked to in leave. In essence, any new tenant coming in, it's a 12-month contract. Um, not necessarily. I think we'll, we'll touch no. on that in a yeah. moment. But for a landlord's point of view, yeah, they're it, committing to they're it. committing them, they're committing to twelve months minimum for yeah. the tenant. Right. Okay. Um, so effectively, yeah, for the ten for the tenant, the tenant sort of knows that the landlord, unless they're doing things they yeah. shouldn't do, they have twelve months worth of yeah, security. Yeah, effectively, yeah. yeah. Um, and now, obviously, um, touching on that second bit, antisocial in sixteen years, I think we've had one antisocial issue that we dealt with, and it didn't end up with the tenants leaving; it was sorted out. Yeah. So you know, it's not a major problem because obviously. The key part to is choosing the right tenants in the first place, you know, and we're and we're lucky that we've got the ability to do that in, in yep. virtually every case. But um, the perspective of the um, moving out and if these things aren't right, because you know some some tenants aren't right at times, and uh, the court systems obviously uh, we don't know yet how quickly they're going to get into place, but we. We know the information that's coming is that it's going to be a lot quicker and easier to ask someone to leave your house if you can obviously prove that they're doing things yeah. that shouldn't be. And now come on to the area shortly as to as yeah. to how that works. We won't really listen. Where yeah. else are we up to now? Um, so I was just going to touch on um, the tenancy agreements, yeah. the, the changing. Yeah. So there's not going to be any assured uh, short-term tenancy, so there's no fixed no. period. Yeah. Okay. Um, so at the minute we sign majority of ours up to six, six months, months. That's right. some 12 months. That's all going to be that's all going yeah so you're just going to sign a contract which is straight away periodic from the very first day so i think that monthly. is the most um if someone asked me what do you think is the the biggest change that landlords and people that don't understand it will, yeah. won't be able to get that around is that is yeah. that yeah because you know nowadays you know most landlords will ask you to i want 12 months because obviously they want longer term tenants yeah. but now we're effectively telling the landlord you have to rent it for 12 months, you can't sell it realistically. Yeah. You, yes, you can get it back if they're not paying, etc. But what were your tenant? A tenant's completely different, yeah. isn't it now? Yeah, yeah. Well, a tenant can effectively give notice after the first day yeah. of the tenancy. So on day one, the tenant could then give notice and you, then mm. the, 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 they're coming out and there's not yeah. actually anything we can do to stop that. However, it's two months notice and you can't give your notice until your next rent due date. Yeah. So it sounds like one month, effectively it's three. The reality is it's three. It's three it? months. Yeah. In the current way it is at the moment, it's six months. So it, yeah. it's only actually three months that you, think, and it gives us time to find somebody else. Yeah. The, key, the key part for me in that is, you know, looking at, you know, there's, there's, there's different types of landlords, isn't it? you've got landlords that have the properties managed and you've got landlords that do finders fees. Mm -hmm. Now, the finder's fees that are where we charge people for doing everything we do at the pre-tenancy, getting the tenancy set up, legalities, referencing the rest of it, and then we hand them over and the yeah. landlords look after it. We get paid a fee for doing that. But if you have got tenancies that you do that way that come out after three months, you have to pay again. Yeah. So there's got to be an element, I think, of finder's fee landlords that go, wait a minute, mm. I, I, there's a benefit here now to actually having my property yeah. managed. Yeah, yeah you're not going to get the charge again yeah. and if, if it does happen. And obviously the checks we do, we're still going to ask all the questions. We're still going to do as many checks as we can to make sure that we are finding someone who is genuinely looking for, yeah. for a long-term yeah, let. They're business people, aren't they? So effectively from a business perspective, it element, it reduces the risk of them having to pay for a service twice or three yeah. times in a year, in a year. essentially. Yeah. Uh, and, and you know, but we know that the demand for rentals is absolutely still sky high. We, you know, and I will touch on at the end when Tom's got a couple of questions about what the dangers are of of this act, and I'll talk to you about mm. the demand and the situation yeah. locally on that. But the key for me is, is I think that as there'll be a lot of, uh, of of landlords that are self managing will just go wait a minute. It's mm. better for, for them guys to look after it, yeah. and that's what obviously we're we're trying to talk to people 100%. about, isn't it? Yeah, and I think. That pretty much covers off all the, the security stuff, but uh, just the one that you wanted to mention um, before you went was about arrears and yep. the way that that's changing. Um, I know you've done this for quite a while now, haven't you? You've got some quite wow. good stories about how we're... Uh... He's getting on a bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some quite good stories about how arrears and, and the way we've worked them over the years, which is yeah. going to carry on. So. Yeah, so I mean, obviously from our perspective, we're, we're blessed, aren't we? So at the moment, if I was to look at our, what we call, pay prop system, 
Um, I think we've got one client that's more than one month in arrears. Mm. And, and there's a circumstance for it, and it's been like that for three years, but it's been the same level for three years. It's not increased. We've got two people on payment plans at the moment, which are where we're helping them get over some legal hiccups that they've got. Yeah. But the key part to the arrears section is, is that if you do the job right in the first place, and you vet people correctly, and you do all the work that we do, you don't really have a problem with that. Yeah. What's actually happening with the, the system of the arrears is at the moment, if we got a tenant that went past two months in arrears, at that point then you can give them a section 8 or a section 21. Most people give section 21s because they're easier, but then it's not right, it should be section 8, but it's just the way that people do it. The key part for me is, is that this is now going to effectively three and a half months. So if you're not getting the right tenants in your house, you're actually going to have three and a half worth, months worth of rent. And our average rent now is seven, eight hundred pound a month. So you know you're talking two thousand one hundred to two thousand four hundred pound in arrears before you can set off an eviction notice in regards to going through courts. I think it's section eight's the right term. And then effectively, you've probably got. We think it's going to take you six weeks to yeah. get people out. So you know, chances are they're not going to pay that in that part. part. And if you've no guarantors, which lots of people don't have, then you are potentially nowadays talking of three four five right. grand before you have legal costs yeah so again it, it just reiterates for then you know we talked very early on about reluctant landlords and accidental landlords if you're in that bracket where you rented your house out by accident or because you couldn't sell it a few years ago and you're just self-managing it i'd really yeah. suggest you to give us a call yeah. and speak to us because it's important that we talk to you about how i carefully manage arrears by working with tenants supporting mm. them and not there's not horrible pressure but we have to get an agreement yeah. in place but that's just like i said to you both before about getting the relationship brilliant between agent landlord tenant yeah. if you try and do that to the bit, and there's always going to be a little bit of niggles or fallouts but you know we only really try and work with good landlords yeah. mm, you know and, policy, and how many hours yeah. do we turn away where we say it's not for us yeah you know the reason being is because we because know that the relationship is going to be wrong and we don't want that to, yeah. to be from our perspective from our company values it's mm -hmm. not just all about you know, we, we know the demands there, but actually to reach and find these people, one thing without going into my usual, it's not sort of selling what we do so well, so hard, but the quality of the marketing doesn't drop off. We still maximise the visibility to find the right tenants that suit to a property that we're, that we're trying to, yeah. you know, yeah. trying to rent out. And just because the demand's high doesn't mean you can't reach more people. Yeah. And reaching more people now, by the sounds of what you guys are talking about, is going to be more important than ever. Yeah, 100%. Absolutely. It's, it's a, the security is massive, isn't it, on yeah. all sides? And we're going to try and help make sure that the landlord has as much security with the 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 rental as what the tenants do yeah. through the bill so yeah. it's just bringing it all together it is and nice. you know we've said it a few times but we're already doing half of this yeah 70 percent of it 80 percent yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, that's why you guys look so relaxed yeah. <laughs> we're, we're <laughs> and i'm sat here as an investor going i'm not so sure but yeah, well, there's enough. you're giving me that security which is good so that's <laughs> that's the idea isn't it so yeah. I mean, rental experience is where we get on to the next part of it. Yeah. yeah. And obviously, this is the third area, well, the second or third area. Um, blanket ban on discrimination. Um, yeah. So, this is easy and dead quick because. We do it. Yeah, it's simple. It's, it's um, something yeah. that we've not been discriminating yeah. against anyone in no. the. the but in, but in, in, in the context of it, it's effectively about pets, pets, pets children, and, and DSS, DSS and benef it? other, other benefits. Yeah. So, yeah. there is no way now that an agency, a landlord, can say that you're not having the property or you're not coming to view the property because you've got a pet or you well, people you're... people still think that's the case because we yeah. pick up the phone well, and they say, right you, now you can't talk yeah, yeah. Uh, well it's yeah. do you take dss do you have pets but that then questions just yeah. Yeah. The, the, pet, the pets and the children situation right now is not legal um dss has been an issue for a while mm. and, and believe it or not i still see some rental agents writing on their listings no dss no. which is well, it's illegal it's now so no, never mind in the future but, i think we've got properties at the moment that all three of those are covered children absolutely. we've got children yeah. in probably more than 50 percent of our properties yeah. pets we've got no, we've we done plenty, haven't we? We've, yeah, look, we've plenty. Some, some landlords are still in the position they won't accept them, aren't yeah. they? Yeah, yeah, but they're going to have to learn that next year that's that not an option. It's not an option. There are going to be some smaller little caveats into that way. We can ask the tenants to take insurance out yeah. against the pet, which yeah. we'll, we'll have set up probably in place. Um, and then there's caveats so that if you know if you're in the smallest property, you can't yeah. have six dogs. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but we don't know the ins and outs. So, uh, that's going to work. The yeah. word yeah. the wording they're using mm -hmm. is unreasonably withhold consent. Yeah. So if it's a 
a one bed cottage yeah. and you've got two great big husky dogs, so the chances like, are that's probably quite reasonably. To, it's so open to perception. Yeah. So yeah. That, that's just, what we're waiting on to see where them bars you, and levels what's going to become be really important with that is inspections. Yeah. Because if, if you let someone go into a property with this, you know, open aspect, they can have pets. So right, if they've got a little chihuahua, but when you lock, <laughs> when you lock up and they've got four cats, two dogs, yeah, you know, so yeah. like our inspection service is where we do it six months until yeah. they were settled with them, yeah, 12 yeah. months, that's going to be really, really cool. important to yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know how it works if you rock up and they've got six dogs when they're only like one, <laughs> yeah. but that, that's the detail that will come yeah. out of yeah. it, isn't it? So, yeah. Good. So that's obviously that's the key part from that. That brings the two in, to, yeah. <clears throat> in together. There to was that. also um, obviously deposits as well. Yeah. So deposit discrimination yeah. on deposits. You, at the minute, we might take kind of a couple of hundred pounds for a dog, or, or, or yeah, pretty much for, for pets more than anything really. We've yeah. put, that's going to be going as well. So wow. you, your deposits yeah. have just got to be at yeah, the, the, the set maximum level, of five, five weeks. Like this, yeah. So, so we tend to take um, we just take the same one month though, yeah. but yeah, it's just easier. Yeah. Good. So I mean, they're the bit. There's sort of like the key parts there. So it's your renting the pets, it's your ban on discrimination, yeah. and then obviously decent homes. Now the decent homes is all about our abs law. Yeah. Um, obviously, where we had the sad case about the young gentleman that passed away due to damp issues over in Rochdale, I think it was. Um, you know, we've actually for the last probably 14, 15 months, we predominantly now the minute we get anything that's linked to damp reports, we get. And there's a local company in Clitheroe come in yeah. and we do a report and that guides landlord and guides tenant. Because I would say that, you know, 56% of the time, tenants can help with condensation related things. But there are usually issues that, that are linked into water ingress, yeah. which is causing mould in bathrooms or extraction more than rising down. Yeah. But the key part to that is, is that, that that's becoming law yeah. Yeah, for residential as well as social housing. Yeah. So, but again, because of the way we go about things, the minute we get reports on it, it's dealt with. Yeah. And look, and don't get me wrong, sometimes it takes you four months, five months to get it right, you know, but you went to an inspection last week, didn't you, where we'd done a lot of work and we'd spent about nine grand, did not we? What would have that, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, for, a, for a landlord, on, on it was roof, it was damp, it was rising, Windows it was extraction, and, yeah. and it's still not 100%, is it? No. So, but, you know, we've had the contractor back this week and the contractor's making some slight amendments. plan in place to, yeah, so, to revisit it. So it's not, again, it, yes, it's big news, but it's for the right reasons, mm. you know, and, and again, we when I walked properties and, um, and you value properties, when I see the value of properties, if we see any evidence of it, we won't take it on unless a landlord has said he's going to fix it. Yeah. You know, because it's just a problem waiting to happen for tenants, landlords, and for, for everyone. Agents yeah, for as well, everyone. Yeah. So. yeah, yeah. Good. Right. So, obviously, the third area, the key part was compliance. Yeah. Um, and again, changes in this, which are probably pointing people to think, yeah. right, I need to be organised. So you talked to us about the database. Yeah, the, the database I think is going to be one of the biggest things for, for landlords themselves because we can't help them with it. No. So there's a database coming in, PSR database, which all landlords must register themselves on and each individual property. It can't be done by a letting agent. It can't be done by anyone. It's got to be done by themselves. So this is the bit where landlords, even if we're managing them, they're going to have to yeah, do, do this bit themselves. Yeah, yeah. So basically all it is, it's a database so that they know who, who all the landlords in the country are and which properties are being, being rented out. There is going to be a fee. Um, don't know at the moment any indication of what the fee is going to be whether it's going to be a, a landlord fee or a property fee so obviously we'll keep you all updated as as that happens um, and we're not going to be able to market a property unless we call both the landlord yeah. and the property and the property have the code that yeah. we need to to market it so yeah. if a landlord comes to us and says oh i'll do it next week i'll do it next month we we just can't they just delay we just can't list the property yeah. Yeah. and it's not something we can do so we, we, there will be landlords probably out there that Ring us to say, can can you just do it for me? I'm busy. We can't. It's, yeah. it's not so we'll, we'll engage that's, with them as early as possible. And yeah, as soon as that comes out, we'll be yeah, straight on to it. So. Again, at the minute, we don't know if that's going to be for existing properties. So it, when they bring this in next summer, we don't know I, if I think, existing I think it, are going to have to I be. I think they'll put it on existing. Yeah. Because uh, I think is there's a double-edged sword here. I think that, obviously, if you've got to have that licence to rent your house out, I think there's still an element of... Um, inf investors and landlords out there that might not be paying full taxes on things. Yeah. So I think it's a double way of the you know, government being able to get a full list of landlords. Mm -hmm. But yeah. But that's that's maybe a bit cynical. Yeah. Possibly. So, <laughs> yeah. But it is it's a, another sort of grey area in terms of 
of dates on that. Yeah. And if we talk about the penalties of it, yeah, well, penalties you know, coming now. This yeah, is yeah. probably what's going to make people sit up the yeah, most. It certainly, put um, out right. It definitely. Yeah. Yeah. But a first-time offence is is seven thousand pound fixed price of seven thousand pound for a first first offence. Um, so yeah, it's going to be absolutely yeah. vital that. So you know these people that just whack their house on Facebook and rent them out. They need to be aware yeah. that that you're doing that without this license, and you rent your house out without license. Seven grand, seven thousand, and then how much is the second one? Forty thousand. Fixed penalty for a second and any subsequent offences. So if you're, if you, I don't know, say you you do it like you've said on Facebook, you you do it, you put move someone in within twenty four hours, which yeah. which some, some do, does happen, which yeah. some do. Yeah, yeah. There is a great chance that you might miss three, four, five of these points that we've just gone through. Yeah. And each of those offences is forty thousand pounds. Yeah. It's <laughs> when you're renting a, a, a two bed terrace out at six hundred pounds, it's a yeah. lot of making up to do. So uh, you know that that's it's not worth the risk, is it? They're not meant they haven't messed around there. That that will make everybody do the registration. Yeah. Yeah. which will then lead to the whole point of this of, of being accountable yeah. as a landlord to look after your tenant yeah. which is and it's not, a, it's not you shouldn't be scared that £40,000 doesn't bother us we, no. we've not looked at that and thought no no because we know that we do all the points yeah. to make sure that that fit, that penalty doesn't yeah, that, come in we, we, you know, we know that our it, current landlords at the moment are completely protected other than the well, fact we need to get your code yeah, uh, and, and you we need to get you on the door it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a big yeah. I hear that and I think about if you there's so many there's so many landlords out there that are managing portfolios of properties, you know, one or two, but I think similar to similar to solicitors, if people have had a solicitor that they've used always, even if they're not too happy with the service, we find they tend to continue to use them yeah, because true. people don't like change. But yeah. when it comes to managing properties and renting them out now, is that if you're unhappy with the services that you're being provided from your management company, and you've not got confidence in the in what they're doing, that it could cost it's dangerous for them, yeah. but the problems and what then the changes that are coming now more than ever, yeah. how relaxed you guys are makes me feel so much better that you're looking after mine, but for for everyone else out there, that yeah, finds I mean, most it's dead easy, isn't it? If if your current Western agent isn't talking to you about this now, then you want to be slightly concerned about yeah. why are they not talking to you about yeah. it now? Because yeah. they should be starting to get you geared up because other places will have a lot more changes to make. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. It's, it's key part to it. I think the last little bit for penalties. Um, yeah. If any agent or landlord is found guilty of breaking any of the the points we've we've spoken about, they can claim back up to two years rent. Yeah. Um, so again, just another thing on top of the fixed penalties where it's going to be really important that we just talked that about done. average price has been seven, eight hundred pounds. Yeah. You know, so you've another there sixteen years, grand, 16, haven't you? 17. 14, 16 grand yeah. is coming you know, out, yeah. So uh, it's just little things that obviously are really important that we we don't allow to happen. Good, right, bro. So I mean effectively that they're, they're the main key areas we've picked out of it. Yeah. Um Obviously, what we need to look at is implementation. So that's you know what's happening now. When are we thinking this is all going to kick in? Yep. But we just had the, is it the 9th of October was the second reading. Yeah, second reading on the 9th of October. And, and there were some, I know they're talking about potential changes yeah. in that. But yeah. the next one is... They said before Christmas. Right. They're hoping before Christmas. Right. And then it can go through the House of Lords in yeah. January or early Feb yeah. 2025 with an idea of getting it all enforced by the summer. Yeah, and um, I fully expect it to be ready by June. Yeah, so that yeah. was the, on on what we've heard in the last yeah, few the weeks, yeah, yeah, that we, yeah. we've listened to, then then June, July is looking like the, and, and this, the, the big thing is there's not going to be any sort of, you've got 12 weeks notice, it could just be as much as this is coming into effect in two weeks time. Yeah. That yeah. was what it, they were understanding is last week. It's so good that we're touching in on this now yeah. because it's going to be something when it drops that people will start to panic, won't they? Yeah. yeah, yeah it's well. going to be a lot, a lot of work involved at the big, if you don't get it, if you're not operating correctly, you know. Um, but we, you know, we're comfortable, we'll just track it right the way through and um, by the time we need to be ready, we'll be 100%. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're, I reckon we're 90% now, but yeah. we'll be 100% by the time we get there. So we'll be absolutely fine. Yeah. Um, Touched on it earlier on, but I think as we sort of come to a close with it, uh, I mentioned to you before about the, you know, you had a question, you sent me an email last night, didn't you? You said to me, you know, Dad, you, what's your expectations uh, of, of the impact of this? Well, the impact's already started because, unfortunately, we are seeing some landlords just selling up. Yeah. You know, and I had a chat with someone two days ago in Paddy Market, and they've got a tenant in with a couple of kids. 
Um, and he rang us and he said, Andrew, what's my options? I'm a bit concerned over it. So I, what we've done in the end, we've settled on, don't panic, let's put the property up for sale if you really want to sell it. It's not selling it because of this, it's other reasons as well, but this was part of it. So what we've actually been able to do is, is talk to him and said, well, I'll give you this option, however, we sell it with the tenant in it first, and let's not upstick the tenant, ask him to leave just because you want to sell your house. I said, let's competitively price it and let's find it. She's a good tenant. She's paid her rent on time every time. It's not too expensive. The house has got good yield. And effectively, we've set it up now where we've got that coming to market next week in, in Padium. Um, the key to that is, is that I think there's a lot of agents out there and investors and landlords that are just going, oh, just sell it, just sell it, just sell it. Well, what you're doing is you're making people homeless. Mm. And realistically, there's if we try and get over the message that this is a protection for everybody, it's not... A major problem we handle it then i think that we should be trying to encourage people to stick in the industry stick with the rentals because you know the demand never is absolutely yeah. mental never been higher and the rents have already gone up to levels which are very quite quite unsustainable at mm. times but there are the levels now where people are paying i don't know how much percentage of the salary is going on the rent but it's a high level if the landlords all just read this and go i'm out then effectively, you know, it's just going to push that up further yeah. and it's going to push the demand up further. And the one impact of this for me is we're trying to get over, particularly locally, you know, because our heartlands are obviously from the Reed branch looking after BB12 and Burnley and, and all the villages around us. And then obviously the Long Ridge branch. The message out is don't panic about it. Let's just stick with it. Stick with your long term investment. Tom always talks about capital appreciation that you can get from your investments. The yields are good, the rents are out there are strong, and the quality of tenant is high. There's no reason to do it. But the one impact for me is, is I think, you know, we have already seen people selling. I know there's other things with capital gains tax in the budget coming up and things, but from an impact effect, I think that's the one negative, as I think that it's really putting pressure on landlords to think, I'll just sell. Mm. And we're trying to get it out of the don't, you know, stop panicking. Yeah. If you're managing it yourself and, and you're scared by it, Stop managing yourself, bring it to us and let us get on with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we charge you fee, but it's well worth it that you're compliant, you're offering security for the tenant, which is what it's all about, and you know it's being done properly. I think one, thing we, one, one thing we we won't charge a fee on is that initial little bit of our time. No. You know, a little it's a little bit extra before we shut off, is that I really do I would always encourage people to speak to you guys. Ring, mm. ring to have a come conversation. In. Just yeah. have Come and have a brew, come and have a coffee, sit in the office, give us a call. Let's jump on a Zoom call if you're not a local investor. And let's just talk about the local markets, the changes that are coming in and how what we do can benefit you in the long run. There's no need to be making knee-jerk reaction decisions to, to sell straight away just because of these changes. That you are spoke in. to someone last week, they've got 12 houses, didn't 12, they? They, yeah. man, they managed 12 themselves. They were selling they're actually more. Petrified. They can sell a whole caboodle mm. uh, and Tom's would stop. Let us look after him, and now you're renting to him out already, aren't you? Right? Yeah, yeah. Tom, Tom went to stop. Speak to Torby. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. He's got to do what he does. Yeah, Have a conversation yeah. with Torby, yeah. and let's look at how we can help you moving forward. Because yeah. these 12 properties, that was a pension pop. Yeah. So he was offloading, selling properties, you know, when maybe there's still time yet for them to grow in terms of prices because they weren't in, you know, the, the less desirable locations. They're in areas where in the next 10 to 15 years, she could see some serious growth. Yeah. She's invested into them. They're all done to a good standard. When they've needed the works, they've been sorted. One, so, of, one of them's had certain trucks. One of them's had like 40 viewings, is not yeah, it? 40 Yeah, you, know, you were there 40 Jordan, different people no, you know, for one house that, that was going to be sold. So that's 40 potential tenants got a chance of renting a house out that were going to be sold a lot because yeah. of this. Yeah. But that's yeah. that's the only thing for me is that's the impact to it when we're trying to help do our little bit locally just to say, relax, it's fine. Yeah. yeah. Come and talk to us. Yep. So mm -hmm. I think well, happy. It's yeah, happy. And I think it's just gonna it's gonna be one of those things that is gonna change. There, there will be bits of the what we've spoken about that might change in the next reading and the yeah. know, January reading. So and it's our understanding we'll keep, as well, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is, yeah. We're, we're fairly sure what we've told you today is all nice yeah. and accurate. And then we'll, we'll keep you up to date as and when yeah. there is little changes. And I think the things that will change the most are probably the the dates and the, mm, the yeah. time frames and the, the I think we've gone through a lot there. I think what will be beneficial beneficial to everybody moving forward is that as and when these changes start to come in in stages or when things ha are happening, we'll do shorter podcasts, give people the information that they need and the bits yeah. that we feel are most important. Oh, and we can do that with ease now. Apparently. I just think that's going to work really well. Yeah. So, cheers, Brilliant. Sounds good. Thank, right. you. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers, guys.